Hi everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Print. Welcome to Mustang Print's Oro Reports. You're probably wondering why I'm not in the Mustang's den today, which I like to call the room where I mostly record my reviews, which is upstairs from here. Well, it turns out there was one major flaw last night that caused my lights to go to blow a fuse last night while I tried to well, anyway, I decided to film my review down here for today. So, I guess you're wondering what my big surprise of review is going to be today. Well, time to get really it started. You guys are not going to believe this, but I just discovered that this is the 20th anniversary of one of the most beloved animated films of the 90s, The Swan Princess. Now, this film happens to be one of my most favorite childhood classics of all time. Here's the story. The aging King William and widow Queen Huberta arrange a marriage between their children, Derek and Odette. Despite the two children's initial dislike to one another, eventually they fall in love when they're grown up, but when the evil sorcerer Rothbard, who desires the throne for himself, enchants the young princess, He's turned her into a swan by day and becomes a, makes her become a princess at night only when the moon is in the sky. Prince Derek refuses to accept another bride and continues to search for his lost love. When he finds her, Derek must fight the sorcerer to free her from the spell using the powers of everlasting love. <sighs> and now, to be honest, I really didn't see the movie in theaters, though I wanted to. My family just never got around to doing to take me to it. However, I was first introduced to the movie from a behind-the-scenes trailer that was shown on one of my grandmother's VHSs. And during my junior high years, I finally got the chance to see the movie when it was on Netflix, and I loved it from that time forward. And I bought my own DVD copy just a few years ago from Amazon. The story was very well done, the songs are very unforgettable. The voice acting is really, really spectacular. My rating, 100%. Soon, during the late 90s, two Swarm Princess sequels were released straight to video. The first sequel being called The, Ca the Secret of the Castle from 1997, which follows Derek and Odette's one-year anniversary of their wedding, which was de being disrupted by the actions of the evil wizard Clavius who wants to regain the Forbidden Arts and destroy their happiness. Now, when I rented that film from Netflix a long time ago and watched it on YouTube, I kind of enjoyed it, but the first can never be topped. But I still enjoyed it, though. But my favorite part of the movie was Clavius's villain song, which <laughs> absolutely rocks. However, like, I'll give it a 91%. And in 1998, the third film, Mystery of the Enchanted Treasure, was released. This film follows Derek and Odette having to deal with Zelda, a sorceress who is seeking the Forbidden Arts and wishes it to use it to destroy their happiness as vengeance for Rothbard's. And now, to be honest, this movie is alright, but it could have been a little better. Still not as good as the last two films. The new songs were alright, just the story was okay. Plus, Zelda was a really threatening villain. I'll give it 75%. However, I don't have a copy of these two sequels just yet, but one day I'll find a proper time to buy them from either Amazon or Target. And as the years went by, I had a feeling that the franchise was going to be over. That is, until the winter of 2012 when the Swan Princess Christmas came along. Unlike the last three Swan Princess films, this one is entirely computer animated. Plus, it takes place between the first and second film. Now, I have been hearing that this one was panned by fans of the franchise, but it doesn't seem to change my feelings for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, too, miss hand-drawn animation animated films, too. But I don't mind computer animation, just as long as it's a good story. And this film is no different. The story is warm and a little dark, 
The songs are very beautiful, and some parts of it brought back fond memories. So much so that the entire movie made it to number 19 on my top 25 holiday films. For me, it deserves 89%. Now, as I look back at these films, I have a feeling that something may have been a little missing some, at times. But just recently, A New Swarm Princess was was released straight to DVD, and and it may have been the subject of what I was wishing for the whole time. And it's going to be the subject of today's blog. Released to DVD on February 25th, 2014, the movie is... Well... The Swan Princess, A Royal Family Tale. Now, on with the blog. Shortly after the royal family adopts a young girl named Elise, she is kidnapped and taken away into the forest by a clan of Scottish accented flying squirrels called Scullions, who believe Odette to be evil according to a prophecy that was altered by an evil force known as, known as the Forbidden Arts. Princess Odette, Derek, and their woodland friends Puffin, Jean, Bob, and Speed, with the help of a banished Scullion named Scully, must work together to find a way to rescue Elise, convince the Scullions that Odette isn't evil, defeat the Forbidden Arts, and bring her home back to the castle. Now, my thoughts? Well, I absolutely adored it! But I have a feeling that this kind of story should have been done before, done a long time ago in the franchise. Now, like, to move on to what I call Mustang Notes. The director of the film was Richard Rich. Who directed the other Swan Princess films, along with The Scarecrow, The Trumpet and the Swan, the anime King and I film, and before all that, directed The Fox and the Hound and The Black Cauldron. To me, Rich did a good job directing this sequel, However, like I said earlier, this story could have been done a long time ago. I mean, maybe Rich wanted to do this story, but maybe he couldn't find the proper time to work on it. Now, the studio behind responsible for the computer animation was, well, once again, Crest Animation. Now, Crest Animation is an Indian animation studio which was founded by Shyam Raja Ramana in 1990 under the name Crest Communications, and it first went public in 1995. In 2000, it acquired Rich Animation Studios in the United States after the failures of The King and I and The Trumpet of the Swan. In 2001, it had over 500 employees. However, it had three years of losses during which it laid off all but 110 employees. In 2004, it posted a profit and hired an additional 260 animators, and in October 2004, renamed itself to its current name. The current CEO is A.K. Maidhaven. In 2010, the company released an anime feature film in conjunction with Lion's Gate called Alpha and Omega, which now the animation may be a bit weird, but I can't say it's bad, but I think it's a little bit of an improvement over Alpha and Omega. Now, this wouldn't be a Swan Princess movie without a few songs. During this film, there are three songs in a row. The first song being We Want to Hear From You is a song where Odette and friends try to make Elise feel happy. Now, this to me is a fun song. It makes everyone... Well, anyone able to sing along to it. But at one point in the... And the song does show some modern dance moves, like a pirouette or a move that Michael Jackson would file copyright for. Still a really fun song, nonetheless. The next song, Get the Job Done, might count as a villain song, which is sung by the Scullions as they plan to kill Odette. Like most villain songs, this one is pretty dark, especially during the parts when Mangler discusses his plans with the Forbidden Arts. Then there's Always With You, which is a lullaby, which is sung by Odette when Elise had a nightmare. Lastly, during the end credits, we hear Right Where I Belong, sung by Cherise. That song is one of my favorites in this film, and it's really a nice and fun song. It makes me feel like dancing to it. 
Now to move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main heroine and swan princess, Odette, is sadly no longer voiced by Michelle Nicastro, due to her tragic death from breast and brain cancer on November 4th, 2010. Instead, she's voiced by Lori, Laura Bailey, also known in some films as Ellie Dietz. Who, in my opinion, like in the Christmas film, does a beautiful job voicing Odette. In this film, she has a new role. She's now a mother and has a new daughter to protect and love. Plus, she still has that sweet and smart personality she had in the other films. But still, it's a little disappointing that she doesn't turn to a swan in this movie, although it's shown in a few flashbacks. Prince Derek, Odette's husband, is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. I never heard of him. Like Odette, his rule has been changed a little bit, too. He becomes a loving father, but he still is has his awesome ways of protecting his wife from danger. Queen Yaberta is voiced by Jennifer Miller. Now, she in this film has become more than Derek's mom. She's now become the kind of woman who wants grandchildren. Now, sometimes in this film or throughout the franchise, she can irritate me at times. Like, you know, mothers can sometimes get annoying. But there are times when Uberta can still be hilarious. Then there's Lord Rogers, voiced by Joseph Men Medrano. Now that in all the Swan Princess films, he's been a real great supporting character to Derek. In this film, however, Rogers states that he misses his days of tutoring. However, sometimes I wonder what's up with his relation with Queen Uberta. Next up are Odette's animal friends, Jean-Bob, a French-speaking frog voiced by Clayton James McKay, Puffin, an Irish bird, voiced by Gardner Jaff, and Speed, a slow-speaking turtle voiced by Doug Stone. These guys are my favorite characters in the franchise, and they haven't changed a bit. They're still the same supportive and lovable animals they are in, in the series. However, in this film, Jean-Bob doesn't think of himself as a prince as much as he used to anymore. Hmm. Next, there's Rothbard's former sidekick, Bridget, voiced by Catherine Levine. Or if that's how it's pronounced. She in this film doesn't do too much in this film other than making audiences laugh with her improper grammar. I mean, she doesn't show herself in too many scenes in this one other than her playful attitude. As well. Now let's talk about the new characters, starting with Derek and Odette's adoptive daughter, Princess Elise, rarely voiced by Carly G. Fogelson. I say rarely because after we first see her when her father dies in a fire, she becomes so heartbroken that she hardly speaks. I mean, every time she's on screen, it makes me kind of want to shed a tear. And it's almost like I can feel exactly how she's feeling, like... And I also think she's the most adorable character in the whole movie. Plus, she even, she's even got the honor to appear on the front cover of the movie's soundtrack. Now to move on to the Scullions, which I already said before are these Scottish, Scottish accented flying squirrels. So we're gonna start with, this, with the new supporting sidekick, Scully. Voiced by Joseph Mer Medrano. This guy, along with Elise, is my favorite character in the whole film. Why? Because, in the film, he was the only one to know the truth about Odette, and plus, his personality and design almost reminds me of, well, this guy. Now, the other Scullions who stick out the most in this film to me are the master trap makers. These guys are Cutter, voiced by Jeff Marshalls, and his brother Jojo, who surprisingly is voiced by Kirk Thornton, whom I most likely know as this guy. <clears throat> anyway, 
But these two start out as the Scullions' best way to destroy Odette. But when the truth is revealed, they become friends to, and are willing to help Odette and Derek. The leader of the Scullions, Mangler, is voiced by Joey Lotz, Lotzko. Mangler is the second-hand antagonist of the movie, and his attitude towards his fellow Scullions seems kind of familiar. It's like almost a little similar, probably to me, like two other villains, but who, to be exact? Hmm. Yeah, that will work. Then there's the Forbidden Arts, the main antagonist of the movie, who is voiced by David Lodge. Now this thing has had the most build-up throughout this whole film, even probably the whole series in general, I think. I mean, this thing, even though I didn't think it was actually a living being, is actually a non-physical cloudy being that came from the underworld to destroy everything. And he gains his power from some kind of crystal in a cave that he lives in. Plus, it was told that he was u that he used Rothbard to get to Odette. He's also responsible for burning Elise's house down and killing her father. And lastly, the narrator is voiced by Catherine Levine. And now to move on to my final words of this film. Above all. The Swan Princess and Royal Family Tale is a really heartwarming sequel. Like the Christmas movie before this, it brings back a lot of warm memories from the first movie. The songs may be a bit rushed in this movie, but they're still memorable. The story is simply adorable, but dark at times. The characters are enjoyable and fun. And like I said earlier, the first Swan Princess can never be topped, no matter what movie may come afterwards. However, I just hope, if possible, if a new Swan Princess movie will be made in the future, if possible, that they would give more of a lease to the audience. But for now, I welcome her to this franchise as Odette and Derek's new daughter. I give this film a rating of 97%. Well, that's all for now, people. However, I just wonder what I should probably review for St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do. Well, be sure to join me for my next blog, people. Mustang Power! I couldn't tell you what I